Hello all and welcome back to the Nothing Notable podcast. Today we're continuing our Bong Joon-ho series. This is part four. Uh, Today we're talking about the 2017 film Okja, written and directed by Bong Joon-ho. There's also a writing credit for uh, John Ronson as well. But um, this is an interesting movie. I I think it really speaks to everything we've seen so far in Bong Joon-ho movies from the host, Snowpiercer, and as well as Mother. It's it kind of deals with all of these things similarly, but in my opinion, I don't think it sticks the landing um, as well as any of them. But I think it'll be a very interesting discussion and we'll talk about it. And also it stars a pretty significant A-list cast. Uh, this is probably Bong Joon-ho's biggest cast. We got names like Tilda Swinton, Giancarlo Esposito, Jake Gyllenhaal, which I'm sure we'll talk about. <laughs> yeah, um, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul Dano and Steven Yeun. Uh, so some really big actors. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's jump into it. And uh, whoever wants to start, let's let's talk. All right. I got to say, this was the first one that I did not like. Oh, wow. I, yeah, bold. Yeah. I, I was watching this movie. I did not enjoy it. I don't want to, uh, you know... Uh, spoil spoil the power rankings, but I think just based <laughs> off that statement, I want to put the music in right now. <laughs> yeah. We all know everyone listens to this just for the power rankings at the end. Um, yeah, but yeah. I felt that like just everything about this movie, I kind of didn't enjoy. Uh, I didn't really enjoy the performances. I didn't enjoy just how like heavy handed it was with the thematics in it. Honestly, you know. Uh, there's a couple of moments that I like in it, but just all in all, kind of a miss for me from Bong here. Um, and may I add, this is our first sad Jun Ho <laughs> moment <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> that's, should that's should when we make a graphic for that? Us, yeah, we should make a graphic for that. That's when he's just sad Jun Ho. Uh, Daniel, how about you? Well, let me say, I love that. I love that now there is there's we could, there's some back and forth here. There's some some disagreement. Um, I like the movie. I think Tyler, you you were sort of alluding to it that it doesn't fully form a complete picture, but the pieces that are there, I do very much enjoy. First, I really just admire Bong Joon Ho's approach to filmmaking. He begins with, or maybe he doesn't necessarily begin with, but he always comes out with a very clear political message. We talked about that in Snowpiercer. Um, He is a political person. What I really appreciate about this movie is it's not pro-vegan. It's talking about the systemic issues that lead to the slaughter and cruelty of animals. It's not asking you to not eat meat. Bong has said this in interviews as well, and all of the cast has said the same thing. It's just saying, look at the capitalist system that allows for animals to be slaughtered in such horrific ways. Late into the movie, there is a scene that is straight out of Schindler's List. It looks like a Holocaust scene with all of the Okjas. It's pretty, pretty, pretty dramatic and pretty clearly designed to look like that. And I I think that the movie is good. I like the movie. And I think we should start maybe with the performances because I think that's where we'll probably all agree, uh, particularly with (laughs) my guy, Jake Gyllenhaal. One of my favorite actors on the planet, but maybe we should just... He's a close personal close, friend of you, mine. You've met him. That's right. Oh, just jumping off of that. I I actually agree with both of you. The first time I watched this movie, I actually didn't really like it uh, a lot. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about this later. There is a scene in this where I'm like, this is this is close to being a masterpiece. And it, it was at a time in the movie I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking love this movie. And then I remember why I didn't love it. And again, I only like it. Um, I, I don't think it's Bong's best, certainly. Um, but again, like we were talking about, like, I, I mean, let's talk about the Jake Gyllenhaal in the room right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm an animal lover. He's a cartoon character. He is. This. He is. That's for sure. Um, it's definitely the broadest performance in the entire movie. And I, I as I'm watching it, I'm, I'm rooting for Jake Gyllenhaal cause he's, like I said, one of my favorite actors, but it just never fully lands for me. I admire the fact that he took some bold swings and I admire that Bong respected him so much as an actor to let him take those swings. But I wouldn't say they strike out. I don't say I don't think he strikes out necessarily, but it's definitely. Oh, I thought he did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought he struck out like he was Jack cussed up there at the plate. Like, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. 
Um, I, I also will say this about it. Let, let's compare it to Tilda Swinton's performance in Snowpiercer because okay. it is a very similar performance as in it is very over the top. But I think what works about Til- Tilda Swinton's performance in Snowpiercer is that that is kind of like she's an oppressive force and she gets her comeuppance at the end. Like Chris, again, s- spoilers for Snowpiercer, but Chris Evans shoots her directly in the face. Um, mm-hmm. And as and when that happens, like the people I was watching with were like, oh, finally, like good. Because like that that had a, like a good moment, but with Jake Gyllenhaal, there's really nothing. Like I I just don't feel like I know much about him, which is why I don't feel like he's like 100 percent an evil. He's just like again, it's just a broad caricature that like I don't really get behind at all, like one way or another. And then nothing happens with him at the end. There's no like release of that really. He just like falls into the crowd in like a wide shot, and then it ends. It was a decision that made no sense for me. I didn't understand like anything that was going on with him. It just like, it didn't add anything to for me. Yeah, it it definitely didn't add anything for me either. And I think it, it's definitely the most head scratching thing about this movie. Uh, and there's a number of weird things in this movie, but bold, bold choice, but bold choices don't always pay off. Even when you're one of the best actors working in Hollywood. Again, as a character, Johnny Wilcox doesn't really have an arc. He's not a big character. He's really just like sidelined. And the reason... I think we're talking about him so much is because it's Jake Gyllenhaal and it's a just a again you can't watch this movie and not look at his performance because it is like 5000% in the air the mm-hmm. entire time. Like even as soon as he gets there, you know, he's like, "Ah, oh, oh, shit, that's so fucking hot." Like he, he <laughs> yeah. like halts the movie. It's crazy. I, I do want to kind of jump off of Jake Gyllenhaal cuz I don't want to make it seem like we're we're bullying Jake Gyllenhaal cuz I do love Jake. Uh, He's a close personal friend. Close personal yeah, and friend. If he wants to come on the podcast, perfect. Absolutely. Open invitation. But the, the I think one of the besides just the performance, the thing that kind of goes wrong here is is like you said, Tyler, the lack of characterization. And I think this is the first movie that we've reviewed of Bong's where some of the tertiary characters are not incredibly well written. Like Giancarlo Esposito's character, I don't even know why he's in the movie. You Very know? strange. <laughs> Very peculiar. The the second Tilda Swinton character is not super well defined it's just it's at least contrasting Strange, with the first unnecessary plot twist yeah and and you know before i jump back into this point i just want to say tilda swinton i think is awesome in this movie and i think she's just an awesome actor and i think everyone should love tilda swinton the way that we love like some of the bigger hollywood actors but the the characters in this movie are sort of broad and like especially the gyllenhaal character is super eccentric and as i'm watching the movie i'm thinking this doesn't You know, a lot of these characters are not totally working for me. But then I started thinking about this movie in a slightly different context. And I think it's the reason why I enjoy this movie more than than probably both of you. I started thinking about this movie as if it was a live action remake of an animated film. If this was like a South Korean animated film that Bong Joon-ho reimagined in live action, everyone would be like, this is an amazing movie. Because, like, the Jake Gyllenhaal character feels like he's ripped straight out of, a, I don't know, like a Studio Ghibli movie. And the same thing with, like, the Giancarlo Esposito character. In, like, an animated movie, he could just be stern and stand there and be tough business guy. Um, and then, you know, some of the uh, the animal rights or- organizers also are a little bit broad and not super well written. And so I started thinking about it like that, like, is as if this is a live action animated movie and i kind of was softened on it you know it doesn't excuse the lack of characterization but it did sort of make me a little bit more comfortable with the broadness of those strokes yeah that's interesting i i feel like i went into this just it, it, I, I i think after a rewatch it gets like a, a little better um i did like it more on the on the rewatch but yeah that, that's an interesting point you bring up i mean it is just like a it's it's a head scratcher for real and like it, it is kind of incredible to see that parasite is his next film um i will say because it's like i i will say um kind of kind of steering it to to some good stuff we liked about this movie i, do I love this movie yeah one, i'm a big fan it, yeah. it's super weird the, but i do like this movie i don't want to sound yeah. too negative of course i i think the one sequence that i really thought was like oh wow i like do like this film and it was like just really well done and i'd like to know your guys thoughts on it um if you'll have me 
um, <laughs> <laughs> is the the, se- the sequence in Soul um, where Okja is hopping from like truck to truck, the uh, Animal Alliance comes and stuff, and it kind of like crescendos in the mall um and it's just like this great sequence of just like there's some really fun music playing in the background uh there's some really great shots that are like kind of like over the head and like mija is like running and she like jumps on the truck and it's like a a lot of cool stuff and like that's like every scene in parasite which is pretty (laughs) incredible but when i saw that i'm like oh my god like this movie is going to be fantastic and then that's when it peaked I, i think the movie peaks like really like 45 minutes in, which, which sucks. And like, even, I mean, the, the guy who plays Kiwu is the, the truck driver yes. in it too, from Parasite. Yes. And, um, like Steven Yeun's like first line is super good. And like, it, it's just like the, the introduction to these characters are really good, but then nothing really happens with anything else. But like that whole sequence I think is a masterpiece. And I think that's easily the best part of the movie. I 2000% agree with you. That was like the, one like section of the movie I really enjoyed. And I was like, okay, this is going to be pretty solid. And then it was all downhill from there for me. <laughs> like that sequence though, I really, that whole chase sequence, mm, chef's kiss. Yeah. I think, I think the first like 45 minutes, like you said, is, uh, is one movie. And then the, the rest of the movie is another movie. And I think where the split kind of happens is the first half of the movie is very Mija and Okja centered and then the second half of the movie, we kind of lose focus on Mija because she is just a child. So she doesn't have the kind of agency that all of the other characters have. Like she can't just freely mm-hmm. move throughout the world because because she's a child. Well, she doesn't do anything in the second half either. She just goes to New York and that's it. Right. And I think that's, you know, she's she is sort of shackled by the fact that she is a child. If she was an adult character, she might be able to get on a plane herself, get there, and then be a part. She could have been like the animal rights characters, you know, making the plot actually move in motion. But she isn't because she is a child. And so by the that sounded like a demeaning comment but it, she's literally a child <laughs> you're just um, it's like that thing from spongebob it's like you're just a kid it's like yeah, yeah. i'm a kid <laughs> me jen the third act's like yeah i'm a kid but yeah. i'm also a wing bat and yeah. a knucklehead, and a knucklehead Mc Spazitron. Spazitron. hell yeah and we then, gotta do that then she becomes she becomes okja she, <laughs> yeah <laughs> stupid but but let's let's talk about I, maybe we should kind of break it down into the first and the second half real quick just because i do want to talk about it, the yeah. first half because to your, to your question originally, Tyler, the, that sequence in Seoul, the the whole chase, even from the beginning of Mija getting to the building and like breaking the window, all the oh, way through, so all good. the way through until you know they're and out lots there. of classic bomb yeah. like slapstick comedy going on there. Yeah, really when, um, excellent stuff. When, when like Mundo is like running, he, he's like it's this is a great oh, this is a great callback too because Mundo was the first one up the mountain, so he's like the best in shape. And when yeah. he's chasing the truck at the end, like he's still running and he's the best in shape. And then yeah. there's that really funny sequence where fucking Mija like starts petting Okja's ass and then just like yeah. he shits on Mundo. Like that's, again, that's like classic bong. And it's like, it's, it's shit humor, but it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think this movie also in the first, first half of the movie, it, it has fewer meaningful setups than his previous movies. And I think because, I mean, we already do this because we love film and we love television and we love stories, but we kind of have our, eyes peeled on stuff like that when we see something that looks like a setup we put it in our, in our back pocket and then when it gets paid off we think back and we're like oh yeah that's that's good on a technical level um but even more so now because like last time i talked about how bong has a quota for setups and payoffs i was kind of just like looking at everything like oh so that there there you go setup 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 this movie though has i think like just from a, a logistical point like it it's got less setups and the setups that are set up are a little bit less meaningful. The most important one is that gold pig. And it's not like, it's not the rock in uh, parasite. Let me tell you. Okay. It, it ultimately serves, it ultimately serves her in the end, but like, it's not in like a super, I don't know. I didn't find it to be a tr- truly meaningful thing. You know, it was just kind of a thing. It was just an extra little MacGuffin to have in your back pocket for the, the end negotiation. Also, so may I ask, like bring this uh to the table too like i remember the original plan was to like buy okja but then instead with all the money 
her like pseudo parent like buys this gold thing but it's like and then at the end it's just like oh i guess the gold thing is like good enough to buy it it just felt kind of like again it wasn't like it was an obvious setup but the thing is like it like didn't work the first time so it's like yeah. weird that it worked the second time i guess is what i'm trying to well, say what you don't understand is that in the period of time that passed between then the price of gold went <laughs> way up gold <laughs> picks became a very valuable commodity mm-hmm. and it's actually worth more than the original cost of purchase okay that makes way more sense now it's like bitcoin and it's a or real Doge. comment from bong it's a real comment from bong on the, the gold market <laughs> yeah um <laughs> i i like all the stuff early on with mija and okja just like living it's very slow moving all the camera work, and also it comes in stark contrast to the very first scene with tilda swinton where she's unveiling the big plan which i loved i thought it was so silly and that is mm-hmm. like the level of silliness that i would have loved for the movie to stay at um but it exceeds even that later on with the Jalen hall character and with some other stuff but that was a fun exposition heavy scene that i thought worked on a lot of fun silly levels and then in stark contrast, we get Mija in what feels more like a South Korean film, just kind of hanging out with her her pet and just her living life. Her super pig. Her super pig. And Which doesn't look like a pig. Doesn't quite it looks like a like a hippo. Like a hippopotamus. Yeah. 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 Hippo and like I feel like the their the feet are like kind of very elephanty. Um but yeah, interesting that they went with Super Pig. But I, I guess the idea is that like we eat a lot of pork, like meat, like fucking. We don't like eat bacon. hippos, so they couldn't yeah, convince exactly. people to eat a super hippo. Mm-hmm. But if it's a super pig, people are like, oh, bacon? You mean bacon? R- remember when bacon was like a huge thing like 10 years ago? Like everyone loved bacon a lot, and now I feel like it's like kind of dead. Sorry, Wait, that's what? a random. Pen- <laughs> no, 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 I understand what like, you're saying. Like, and if you really yeah. if you really want to dive into this tangent, we can. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to. We don't have like to. Like bacon Sorry. burgers were the big thing. Yeah, and like I feel like every YouTube channel was like, damn, we're like eating bacon today like the best food like uh, okay. bacon like yeah, was universally like yeah. yeah exactly like that putting bacon on everything and, that's yeah. interesting anyways um but so you know th- i think this podcast will kind of be jumping all over the place because we have just fairly scattered thoughts for a fairly scattered movie but i i do want to talk about okja because i am so thoroughly impressed with the cg of okja because the one of the hardest things in cg creature making is is weight you know when Mm. when a cg creature moves that's somebody drawing that and they have to figure out the physics of that so when okja jumps early on into the water and like splashes up all over mija that was so impressive to me because you can see the musculature of okja and it looks super realistic and then as she jumps and lands in the water the weight is perfect and when Oak is like banging around, hitting all of the cars and the chase sequence and just like all of the scenes where Oak is doing something physical, it's really, really impressive. And considering how much money they had for this, you know, it, it's it's really, really, really impressive is, I guess, my my big point. Yeah. And I, I will say, like, at no point in the movie. Also, the budget is 50 million for this movie. Just incredible. right now. Um, yeah. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, there was never a moment where it was like, oh, Okja isn't there. But like, if you really like break it down, Okja is so gigantic and unlike most animals you see, you know, like it, it's kind of impressive how not even like, even before you said that, like I hadn't thought of like Okja in an environment where I was like, oh, that's not realistic, but she looks really like real throughout throughout it I, it's like something i like hardly think thought about throughout the movie and i think a lot of that has to come down to also the way that they shot the movie which for most of it they had a guy in a in like a basically an okja suit <laughs> and so the actor actor who plays mija like had somebody to physically interact with so yeah i think that the the vfx work in the host was something that we talked at, at length about and it was impressive then and it's impressive now and I think a lot of people, when they saw the host, they thought to themselves, what would happen if you gave this guy a bigger budget to do a, a, a another creature movie? And you get that with Okja and he does not disappoint one bit. He like really has a great sense of like how to do animation. And I feel like Okja does have a personality and like, it's just like, yeah. 
she's just like a fun sidekick with Mija, and um, you you buy that relationship. I, I think in this movie definitely, which is infuriating when you don't see it as much as you want to. Yeah, I love the uh, the eyes on Okja too. It it has these very like beautiful eyes in the beginning, and then at the end, after it's been beaten and brutalized and pig raped, it's got these like totally distraught, bloodshot eyes. Another classic bong setup and payoff. Oh, speaking of uh, setup and punches, uh, people also get hit hard in this movie. Um, and <laughs> people also like hit the water pretty hard in this movie. Um, it, it was like when Mija falls off the van or the truck, you're like, oh my God, crap. She's, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. dead. She's dead. There's no way. <laughs> and it, it's a reoccurring thing we keep talking about in, in Bong Joon-ho movies. When someone gets hit, you feel it. And it's like, I mean, the, the sound design is just impressive for that, you know? And, yes. and I think, again, there's a lot of interesting, weird sounds in this, but like, there's also a lot of like beats that are like, Oh God, that like, like when all of the, uh, when all of like the, uh, animal Alliance is just like getting the sh- shit beaten out of them by the police. It's like, Oh God, like I'm feeling that. Yeah. And I think we haven't talked that much about sound design in this, uh, in the series, but he, is really really he has a good ear for like how he wants the movie to sound and that's not that's not a small thing you know the sounds of when uh like john carlo esposito and tilda swinton are eating some of that okja bacon turkey jerky stuff (laughs) like that's a great sound that's a great chewing sound that's a great like crunch sound um also early on when uh um Byung Hee Bong, who played uh, the the grandfather in The Host, who plays Mija's grandfather in this movie, um, when he is eating like a food early on, when he takes a bite out of that, it's just like such a strong crunch. Bong Joon Ho, we've talked about how he does dinner scenes and like meal scenes really well. He does that again in this movie, and it made me realize whenever I watch a Bong Joon Ho movie, I'm so hungry, <laughs> always, and a lot of that is the sound design. So. Big credit to him. Big credit to his sound designer and his mixers and, and all of that. Also, again, this is kind of a tangent, but I just thought it was interesting. Mija isn't a vegetarian. That's Yeah, no, that's very true because can we talk about the very last scene for a quick second? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so Actually, the movie... No, no okay, you can, you can do it totally. <laughs> the movie... <laughs> I don't know why you asked my permission. Like, yeah, 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 this is our series. I think it was more uh, of a yeah. rhetorical question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so the last scene... I think is just tremendously beautiful because of what it implies. It implies a world where animals and humans can literally live together as like, not necessarily equal, but part of a family. The last shot is just like the two, the baby Okja and the, the original Okja just in the, the, the presence of that household and they're eating and they're probably eating like a fish stew or something like that. So they're, they're eating a meat product. And again, that's why I mentioned earlier, Bong Joon-ho is not, trying to make an anti meat eating movie. He, I think that's pretty right. clear throughout. It's about the industry in which animal agriculture and and uh animal abuse is actually allowed to to circulate at the way it does. And so that last scene sort of just implies like a future that is really sweet and really beautiful because it is about treating animals kinder. It's not about stopping your meat consumption necessarily and i think that there's Mm -hmm. a that's a big distinction and i think a distinction that i really admire about bong because he he tries to get to the heart of of these political issues as opposed to just addressing like the surface level stuff it could have been very easy to say don't eat meat the movie does not do that it says look at how meat is packaged and and consumed and we've jack you've alluded to the the scene where the the forced mating happens with okja that is a horrifying rape scene. My dog literally for... threw up. Oh, wow. Right after that scene. Yes. After the pig oh, rape wow. scene, my dog threw up. That's a powerful scene. And I think it provides a context to the way that we treat animals in, in our agriculture system. Because a forced mating is, you know, we might not have thought of it as a rape, but that is the rape of an animal. It's not, cons- it's, totally. it's not, it's not okay. Like, that's not cool. You, you get this, this uh, male animal all like, hyped up on steroids and make it super hypersexual and then you force it onto this other animal which has thoughts and feelings and in you know, you yeah, know and relationships that and established in the first hour of the film mm-hmm. exactly and so that that scene along with the the scene that i mentioned that sort of alludes to like holocaust imagery 
really like stick with me. That's one of the reasons why I end up liking this movie despite all of its issues and despite all of the characterization problems right. and the weird performances. I think it's just so at its core level, it's so successful at really conveying that core point. And I think Bong Joon-ho kind of gets lost in the weeds throughout the movie, but he finds his way at the end. This is what I really want to talk about. Okay, there is one of the funniest jokes in this movie that I've ever seen in my life. It's when Paul Dano just shows up in that um, hotel room when Mija is getting ready for the big ceremony. He takes off his glasses. He says, it's me. <laughs> and it's me. It's Jay. <laughs> yeah, that's literally right up my alley. That made me laugh so hard because we did that in a, a show that we did in high school. I, I did that as a character. I took off my fake mustache and I was like, it's me, Alan. <laughs> and yeah. It's just like, and I, I think that's say, so funny. I'm glad you brought that up, Dan, because I remember watching it last night and being like, that's so funny. <laughs> it's like so stupid. And again, I, I think in... In a, in a movie with better characterization, that's like even a better joke because you know like Jay better, you know like Paul Dano's character Jay better. But like in this, he's like kind of very like stoic most of the time. He's and wearing like, a suit the whole again, time. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like and his he, character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like he kicks Steven Yun out and he's like, yeah, like you broke our trust. And then he's like, we're going to still use your shit though. <laughs> like in the future and then he just comes back and he's like oh thanks for coming back because i was about to die um but yeah i mean i i think there's what basically what we're, we're trying to say here in general i think is like there is there's a lot of like moving parts in this and i i don't think they all move together but i think separately each of them could have formed an interesting movie if if that if y'all get what i'm saying That's yeah very well put yeah Last quick thought um, before we move into the power rankings. Bong Joon-ho's movies are always very popular at various film festivals, but particularly at, at the Cannes Film, film Festival. Um, when this movie came out, it came out on Netflix and it was still early in the days of like film festivals and the Oscars being like, no, this is not film <laughs> if it comes out on a streaming service. So when it debuted at Cannes, it was basically banned from winning the, the, the grand prize. <laughs> Because That's it came crazy. out on Netflix. And so they spent a lot of their time in interviews talking about like, well, we came here to show you the movie and we're going to show you the movie anyway, even though we're not going to win this award. And, um, you know, I just think that was that, that it's so funny that only a few years ago that people were thinking that way. Now we fast forward. And I think it's so fantastic that so many people have the ability to see a Bong Joon-ho movie. The fact that it's so widely available, especially after what happened with Snowpiercer and the distribution getting all sorts of messed up because of Harvey Weinstein and his terrible company. The fact that, that Bong then goes to Netflix is kind of an interesting thing. You know, he, he has this horrible experience with the distribution. So he's like, I'm just going to go into everybody's household with Netflix. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, th there's no grander point to that other than just to say, I think it might've been a conscious effort for him for Bong to to try to get more eyeballs on his movie. Yeah, and I just want to want to say that I, I think it just also proves like Bong's just a little ahead of his time with with most things. Um, because like uh, again, Fincher like jumped on House of Cards with uh, we don't have to talk about that other person, but jumped on with House <laughs> of Cards. There's like a lot of big people that like help Netflix get started with the streaming platforms. But I mean, you know, you get Bong Joon Ho, and then like couple years later, you get Martin Scorsese doing The Irishman, you know, and doing yeah. <laughs> Pretend It's a City, which is a crazy show if you guys haven't seen it. Um, this is my friend, is Friendly Martin Boots. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's literally Friendly Boots <laughs> just talking for 30 minutes straight and then Martin Scorsese laughing for like 25 of the 30 minutes. It's kind of crazy. Um, but but then then again, like you, then you got Roma too. Like Roma was a huge one for Alfonso Cuaron, like... It's, it's just really interesting to see how Netflix is changing, like, especially with the pandemic. Um, watch your pandemic pod. Um, yeah. It's all connected, baby. <laughs> <laughs> with like the last year, too, I think streaming platforms are like super important. And there's a lot of films like uh, from like huge directors, like The Trial of Chicago 7, that are, like have come to Netflix and like. I mean, uh, again, this was, I remember when this came out, I'm like, oh, sick, like Snowpiercer director like did a, a thing for Netflix. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, I, I think he was just a little ahead of its time. And um, 
it's like nice to see that it's still on Netflix and um, it will always be forever, which is like cool. It's just like, I again, I don't know where we're going to f- fucking watch like Barking Dogs Never Bite. It's on Hulu. <laughs> it's on oh, Hulu, it's on Hulu now. Oh, yep. thank God. Sweet. Anyways, they have Memories of that- Murder and they have Barking Dog Never Bites. Oh, shit. Okay, we're, we're, we're golden. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, small tangent. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's cool that it got dis- distributed on Netflix. Because, uh, again, I, I feel like a lot more people saw it. And it's so accessible still today. And on that note, time for the Bong Juno Power Rankings. Yeah, what's up? What is up, folks? What is up? Since I went last last time, I'll go first this time beautiful take charge um, in the last place uh comes mother no i'm kidding i like completely <laughs> have changed my list since then um <laughs> no um okay so i i'm pretty confident this week with my list um i'm gonna put okja uh number four uh number three is gonna be the host um and then number two will be Snowpiercer still and then number one for me personally is still mother Incredible stuff from you there. Uh, for my list, I'm going Okja at number four. Didn't like it. At number three, I'm going Mother. Did like it. At number two, I'm going The Host. Did like it. And number one, I'm going Snowpiercer. Did like it. It would be funny if you were like, didn't like didn't it. Didn't <laughs> like it, but I thought it was important. So, Well, listen, hey, we all have Okja at number four, as, as I do mm. here. Um, and then I have Snowpiercer three, The Host two, and Mother number one. I, I like the way that we ended up doing this, the way that we organized the, the movies and the, the way that we've gone. I, I'm so interested in this next movie. I think... I mean, the, the way I, uh, like, I feel like I kind of designed the, the watching order after we decided to watch The Host first. Um, and just, like, knowing Okja was, like, a precursor to Parasite, I was, like, feeling like, okay, then after that we can go Barking Dogs Never Bite and then Memories of Murder, which no one has seen here. We, we haven't seen Barking Dogs Never Bite or Memories of Murder here. And, like, I think it's really interesting because I, I, I think Okja is, like, kind of universally his, like, most kind of like confused film of his like latest career his like latter half and Do- barking dogs never bite is like kind of similar in his early career like i i've i've read mixed reviews on it um and then memories of murder is unanimously like one of his best films and so is parasite so like i really wanted to watch those back to back and i just like developed a, a a way to do it i guess but um i'm really excited for barking dogs never bite that will be our next movie it's from 2000 it's on hulu so check that out um, sorry, Dan, I kind of cut you off, but <laughs> you got any more and stuff? I'm an animal lover. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> I was hoping we would do more Jake Gyllenhaal impressions in this, but it, I'm kind of glad we didn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, uh, I think we're, I'm speaking for everyone when I say Okja, a mixed bag. Um, I think Daniel liked it a little more than Jack and I. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I think this was an interesting discussion. Bong Joon-ho is still a god. Um, I think we can all agree. That's for sure. And yeah. And again, Barking Dogs Never Bite will be our next one in the next couple weeks. Um, keep liking, subscribing. This has been a Nothing Notable podcast and I've been Tyler. I've been Jack. And I've been Daniel. And thank you so much for watching. And shout out to that one subscriber who commented on our last video. Hell yeah. Love that. 